Well, amen. It's wonderful to be able to be here with you today. I count this a great privilege. I say that we need young men and women to stand for the Word of God. Amen. <clears throat> My, how it's needed. I've been in ministry, um, I don't know, 40 some years, and uh, to see what's happened down through the years. It's wonderful to be able to look back and see what it used to be like, and then to see what it is today. But God is still able. Amen? Amen. God is still able to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so um, I want us to um, turn in our Bibles to simply Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 to begin with this morning. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. You remember here concerning the birth of Christ, and I'll point to verse 21, and she shall, call, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now turn with me also to, uh, then over to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, I'm not going to take time to, to read this whole passage here <clears throat> about the man that was sick and <clears throat> they, uh, in, in verse 12, I want to emphasize simply this one verse, and that is, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, now we need your power and your strength this, this morning. Father, these young people need to hear from you, not me, but God, I pray that you'd use me. Hide me behind your cross once again, Lord, and uh, Father, <clears throat> give forth that which needs to be given this morning to meet the needs of these young people. Father, we got the cream of the crop here, but oh dear God, speak to our hearts. Give us what we need from you, Lord, this morning. Bless now as only you can, and we'll thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Entitled my message this morning simply is Jesus Only. Jesus only. <clears throat> I'd like to share my testimony. First of all, I grew up in Ripon, Wisconsin for a number of years. At eight years old, I went to Evangelical United Brethren Church. I was fortunate to have a Sunday school teacher that uh, knew the Lord, and the only time I ever heard the gospel, really, was through the Sunday school teacher. After the morning Sunday school class, she drew me aside. She said, Larry Moody, you're a naughty boy. <laughs> and I was. <clears throat> you know how that is. You deal with them many times. Amen. And, uh, but that's what I was. And she, she nailed me. And she said, you need to go home. And you, before you go to sleep tonight, you get out of your bed and get on your knees. And you need to cry out to Jesus and ask him to save you and trust him as your personal savior. And God smote my heart. <laughs> I'm only eight years old. And I... Went home that day, and I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't sleep. My brother and I slept in a great big old double bed, and uh, but he was sleeping, and finally I crawled on my bed, and I got on my knees, and I cried out to Jesus. And I said, Lord Jesus, save me. I want to trust you as my personal Savior from sin. And uh, <clears throat> something happened to me. You know what happened? God came into my life. I didn't know what was supposed to happen, but God came into my life. And he changed my life. But I didn't even know what was supposed to happen, what I was supposed to do. I didn't tell anybody for eight more years. We were going to various different churches, floating around, moving around. And, uh, but uh, God never left my heart. And at age 16, we were back in Ripon, Wisconsin after moving. My dad got sick. My dad passed away of a stroke suddenly. And uh, <coughs> I started walking across town to church. And I stood up in evening service that evening, and uh, I shared my testimony how I trusted Christ after being in her Sunday school class eight years before that, and she was in that church then. You see, somebody felt led of the Lord to come start a Baptist church in Ripon, Wisconsin, and what a blessing that was. And so uh, <clears throat> I gave testimony of my salvation. I started walking across town. You see, I used to go in my old Sunday school class. The teacher would come in and say, okay, kids, what do you want to talk about today? 
And then they would talk about something. I'd pull out my goodie in New Testament, as little as I knew, and I'd share a verse, and then they'd laugh. And then uh, I says, Mom, I'm walking across town to other churches. And I finally came and found this Baptist church. And I noticed one thing. They're carrying their Bibles. Amen? I wanted to know what was in this book. <clears throat> and so um, God blessed through that. Then he led me off. <laughs> well, at 18, I finally got baptized 10 years later after I got saved. And then I was off to Bible school. I was going to go to Stout State College to be an industrial arts teacher. And, uh, and then, uh, but the Lord changed plans. I always wanted a godly family and know how to do that. And so I went off to Grand Rapids Baptist Bible College, General Association of Regular Baptist School. At that time, it was, it was quite strong. It was, and uh, praise God for that. Uh, I was, spent seven years there and went to seminary there, came out of there. And then I went to Fremont, Michigan and, and was there for a few years. And then I, I was called to the Lord to go to Stevens Point and start a church. Was there 12 years. Then I went out west, started a printing ministry with Bearing Precious Seed. Then I came back after my wilderness wanderings and started Fellowship Baptist Church. I've been there 30 years now. So that's just, I want you to know where I've come from. But uh, God has blessed down through the years. And, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago, I went back to my college that I went to. It's not the same. <coughs> and it half breaks my heart. <coughs> it's not the same. Young people, you've got to realize what you've got here. <coughs> my heart is uh, tender because of what used to be there. <coughs> I went back there a few weeks ago. Feel it's a couple months now. Time goes so fast. Went back for a 50-year kind of anniversary deal, and I went to this beautiful chapel. Seats probably over a thousand people. Auditorium and so forth, and a stage in the middle, and all these things. They take us through the tour and tell all the buildings, beautiful campus, all these things. But Jesus is missing. Yet they called the chapel Christ Chapel. I've got a brochure here I took, and this is what at the end of it told about the beautiful windows they had. So you got a clock there. I'm watching. By the way, I came prepared today. And so, uh, but uh, <clears throat> beautiful windows in this chapel, over $2 million somebody gave these windows to this chapel. And it tells about the four different ones, but I want to share with you quickly, it's just the one blue one. And listen to this, this is what it says, the blue window. The blue window facing the west represents bapti the baptism of Christ. In it we see John the Baptist hand pouring water over Jesus' head. Whew. Do you know what that means? I mean, it's not baptistic at all. It's just gone down the tube. It's down the tube all the way. You see, I'm, I'm a Baptist by conviction. I didn't grow up a Baptist, but God saved me. And you know, when a person gets baptized, it shows a testimony of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. When I got saved, I repented of my sins, and I trusted Christ as my Savior. I trusted his death on the cross. First of all, I trusted that he was God in the flesh, and only he could go to the cross and die for me. I trusted in him as my Savior that died for my sins. He not only died on the cross, but he was buried. And on the third day, to take away all my sin, even death itself, and on the third day, he rose victorious, you see. And that's the Savior I trusted in. But it doesn't stop there. The Christian life, then he ascended up into heaven, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father today on my behalf and those who will trust him as their personal savior. And he's there to intercede for my sin. He's there to intercede for me. He's there to show me, to guide me, and direct me in life. He's, he's there to, to give me all that I need in this life today to live for him. And the Bible says someday he's coming back also, amen. 
what a great thing that will be when he comes back and he raptures the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive will rise also and meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Listen, I look back at this and I share this this morning. People, thank God for what you have here. Thank God every day. Thank God. God wants to use you. But only Jesus can make it happen in your life. And only Jesus made it happen in my life. And that's why I start with these two verses today. And I want to share that with you. I want you to realize just seven things. I'm going to try to keep moving along here quickly. But uh, seven things. Listen, only Jesus Christ can save. You're here this morning. I think I got the cream of the crop, but uh, there's probably some here this morning that aren't really saved. You've never really come to repentance in your life. You see, the Bible says we, there has to be repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And to come to realize that and understand that and really rest in Christ then for your salvation. You see, young people, as much as you want to serve the Lord and so forth, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. But serving the Lord, serving the Lord isn't what saves you. Not what saves you. I think of a sister-in-law of mine, my wife's sister, went for 12 years and served God over in Africa and finally realized this is all God wants, her to really rest in him every day of her life. You see, it's not Christian service that gets us saved. You see? It's not Christian experiences that people have that get you saved. It's coming to the place of resting in Jesus for your salvation. I've dealt with even a college kid here, I think last year or so, and uh, said, uh, I want to talk to you. I went out and, and uh, talked with him and frustrated. I don't know if I'm really saved. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, I don't know if I'm really saved. Listen, you aren't until you rest in the work of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And when you rest in him, then he causes a new birth to take place. You see, he does the work when you simply rest in him. And so I say, first of all, only Jesus can save you from hell. Only Jesus can forgive you of your sin. Only Jesus can give you peace in your heart. Only Jesus, only Jesus, for you that are saved and know what I'm talking about. Listen, when you talk to people, get that stuck in your head. Only Jesus can save. There's no other way to be saved. You see, only through Jesus Christ can we be saved. And so I share that with you. You know, people have to come to true conviction. You know, in life, people have to come under conviction of sin before they'll ever have a desire for God. Think about it. You want to lead somebody to the Lord, you got to get them, you got to get them to the place they really are convicted over their sin. It's easy to lead somebody to the Lord, but we have to bring them to the place of real conviction. And today people are living in the rampant of sin all over the place, and they don't know it. Everybody's living together, whoever wants to live together, you know, any place, anywhere, it's called sin, okay? There's no standards anymore, all these things floating out the window. I mean, you are a privileged people to be here this morning, especially if you're truly saved and you want to serve Jesus. Only Jesus can bless you. Listen, I'm so glad that God saved me at age eight years old. Came into my life and he saved me. And he's changed my life. Praise God that he then he called me into the ministry. The last thing I ever wanted to be is in full-time service for the Lord, but I was in full-time service and we all have been in full-time service, if you know what I mean. You don't have to stand behind a pulpit to be in full-time service. Amen? Amen. I love to lead people to the Lord, share Christ with people yeah, wherever I am. I love to work. I've led many people to the Lord because I worked with them. We've got a lot of lazy people and young people because you're a Christian. Don't you ever be called lazy. Be a worker. Be a worker. 
I worked as a carpet installer, and I made up my mind that I was going to do whatever he told me to do. He was in question, and I went to get the job, and he, uh, and he said, tell you what, he found out that I was come to town to, be a, to start a church up where we are now, and I didn't start until I was about 42 years old installing carpet. And, uh, and uh, anyway, he made sure when I went to see him, because he, he, he said to me, uh, he says, number one, we work. You see, he really didn't want me to come work with him. He said, we work. He found out I was a Baptist pastor and coming to start a church there in the area. And so I was a little, he says, number one, we work. And number two, we don't talk. He was quite adamant about that and made that clear. And then, uh, then he said, uh, uh, he talked a little bit more, and he says, well, you go home and you think about it. And he said, but remember, number one, we work. And number two, we don't talk. And I says, well, I'll go home and I'll think about it, and I'm going to pray about it. I went home and I thought about it, and I prayed about it. And the next day I called him on the phone, and he says, come to such such a place then. And, at such such a time, and I was there five minutes early, and and then I started working. And he taught me how to trawl glue on the floor, you know. And and uh, anyway, I'm trawling glue, and the boss comes down from that owned that business, and and I was sweating, and uh, he says, "Hey, Steve," he says, "What happened to the fellow you had with you last week?" He says, "Oh," he says, "Needless to say, you know, he never even turned any hours or anything. He hasn't been back, but he says he was on the floor trawling glue like Larry is." And, uh, and anyway, he says, uh, he, says uh, he asked me the question, he says, I suppose when you start stretching and carpet into homes and stuff, it gets a lot easier. And I, Steve said to him, no, it's a lot harder. He says, needless to say, he never showed up for work after that. But he was saying something to me by saying that. And I made up my mind, I'm just going to work harder, I'll do anything you do. And I did. You know what happened in three months? The man got saved. <clears throat> what a blessing he's been to me down through the years. But you see, God wants to use us. God wants to use us. Only Jesus Christ can save. Only Jesus Christ can save people from hell. And hell's a real place, and people are going to spend eternity there. Today it's a bad word, but used freely by people today, not realizing the truth of the word. But listen, I want to go on this morning quickly, and that is, for secondly here, Jesus not only saves us, and by the way, if you're not saved, get saved today. Make that decision. Rest in the work of Jesus Christ. You say, what do you mean? Just believe the word and rest in him for your salvation. Confess your sin and turn your life over to him. Let him come into your life. Secondly, only Jesus Christ can give you true leadership for your life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You say, well, I've heard that before. Do you really believe it? Is he really the way for your life? Is he really the truth? You know, that's what salvation is all about. God is all about truth. God, the Father's truth. He says you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the life. <laughs> Talks about the Holy Spirit coming in John. He's going to be the spirit of truth. It's all about truth. You see, we've got to come to the place of being honest with ourselves. Then we've got to be honest with God. And then we can be honest with each other. Everything's based on truth. And oh, what a wonderful thing when we see that we let truth, the Lord Jesus Christ, take over in our lives. What a blessing. You know, thirdly, only Jesus Christ can give you real purpose in life. Real purpose in life. The Bible says, Paul said, uh, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Do you really believe that? I remember when I was a young person then saved, started in Bible school, saying that, stand up and say, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Are you willing to die for Christ? It could happen in our country that fast. Exactly what's happening over in other countries today. People are getting killed when they stand for Jesus Christ. It could happen right here. Are you willing to die for him? He is the way. 
He is the truth, and he certainly is the life, and life more abundantly. There's nothing greater in life than to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. He wants to be Lord. You know, it's wonderful to be saved. I'm happy because God saved me. But when I allowed him to be Lord of my life, my, that's where the joy of the Christian life comes in. When we let him, when we start really listening to him. You see, Jesus, only Jesus Christ will give you real purpose in life. I've got a wonderful family. I've got a wonderful wife because we want Christ first in our lives. And there's all kinds of, which leads me to the next point. And that is only Jesus can give you real principles for living. The Bible is filled full of principles. You read your, your daily devotions every day, I trust. Get something from God's word and find that truth and apply it to your life. Let God take control of your life in every area. Get something from God. Realize that he is our, your purpose for living. Put him first in your life. Let, pick up the principles of God's word in the scriptures. I am so thankful for the principles of God's word now. I'm thankful for David Kriegel. He's one of my grandsons. I've got some more coming next year. I'm going to be here in school. And uh, I praise God. But we've prayed for these boys years and years. And... Uh, you know, I had him come with me this summer, and, and uh, one of my ladies came up to me and said, uh, I suppose you're really proud of your grandson. I says, no, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the principles of God's word. Now, get a hold of that. It's the principles of God's word. God smote my heart. I went to Bible school. I've been studying the word of God, but God's word and his principles govern my life. It governs my wife's life. It has and is governing my son's and my daughter's lives. And it is governing their children slowly. Amen? What a blessing. I wanted a godly family. Only in Jesus can you have a godly family. When you take God's word serious. Establish a family that's pleasing for him. And listen, it starts with you and you and you and you. It's not the other guy. It's you. Who's going to make a difference in somebody's life? You. It's not your wife-to-be. It's you that's going to make the difference. When you let Christ take control of your life, Dig out the principles of God's word and apply them in your life. Establishing, you know, then the principles of God's word causes us to have standards. I uh, loved the Bible conference last year. It was all about the why behind the standards. And that's what people need to see, you know. It's the principles of God's word that creates the standards. When you get a hold of the principles in your life, then you'll have some real standards Oh, you may be here keeping the standards and doing what everybody tells you to do now, but it's for your good. But it's not from your heart because you haven't got a hold of the principles from God's Word yet. Get into the Word of God, get a hold of the principles, and you will establish standards for your own life. When I first went to Bible school, I wasn't supposed to go to, to movies in the summer and so forth. So I didn't. But it wasn't my conviction until I spent more time in the Word of God. Then it became my conviction. Do you see? It's the same here. Listen, the rules and regulations in this school are for your good. Amen? Take hold of those principles and apply them in your life, and you yourself will make these standards your standards. It's only Jesus Christ working in you, though, that you'll have real purpose in life. Your purpose is to serve Jesus Christ, to get a hold of his principles of his words that, stands, that sets up standards for your life, things you're going to do for God, things you're not going to do for him. It saved me from a lot of trouble. Many years ago, my daddy had to go to the hospital, 
and he couldn't keep food down. And we were just young kids, four, I had three brothers, and uh, he stood us all up in front, and my mother was there, and he says, I'm going to the hospital, I don't know if I'm coming back. He says, number one, he says, you obey your mother. And then he took a cigarette out, and he says, and don't you ever, don't you ever, don't you ever take one of these. I never have taken one of those. And you know what? I haven't gone through all the pain and agony that I see some people have to go through and quitting smoking upon being saved. I never had to go through it. There's a lot of things God spared me from because I picked up on the principles of God's word and applied them to my life and I, I made a decision. People, the decisions are made right here. At the foot of the Lord, at the scriptures, when God convicts you of these things, make them your principles for your life. Make them your standards and God will bless in your life. Only Jesus only Jesus can do this in your life, though. Only Jesus. Only Jesus can empower you. You have to get a hold of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. There's a lot of people that have prayed prayers and thought they were saved, and they, they weren't saved. God, the Holy Spirit, never came into their life. There was no evidence of it afterwards. See? But when we truly repent and will rest our lives in the the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing. You see, people need the gospel today. People want to say the death, burial, and resurrection. I take it further. It's the life of the perfect Son of God. It's his death on the cross. It's his burial. It's his resurrection. It's his ascension. And it's intercession for me today before the Father, which then brings me to my prayer life. I'm talking about that in just a minute. What a wonderful thing to be able to pray to God. Listen, what is Jesus doing in heaven today? He's interceding for you before the Father. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. What is Jesus doing in heaven for you today? He's preparing a place for you. How is he preparing that place? Is he going to have a beautiful room over here? And, you know, according, How is he preparing it for you? He's preparing it through your prayer life. Think about it. That's what he's doing in heaven. He is our go-between before the Father. He's the, our mediator. He is who we can get all things from if we'll just go to him in prayer. He's the one we can praise him for who he is. He's the one that we can thank him for all that he's done. He's the one that wants to answer any need that you have in accord with his will. My word, the word of God says he'll do it. He'll do it. Any need. People, we run to the doctor before we ever get to our knees and ask God what the problem is what the need is. Today we worship doctors. Well, we've got a God up in heaven that wants to instruct you and teach you. You know, you have not because you ask not. I, I mean that seriously. Now, I'm not afraid of doctors and I go to doctors, okay? I'm telling you, go to God first though. Jesus can show you our sicknesses and many things that we have. Now, I'm mad a little bit, but I'm going to. The many sicknesses we have today, we bring on ourselves. You aren't eating right. We're eating junk. You're trying to stay up all night, trying to go to school, right, brother? I'm trying to wake you up. <laughs> I promised him I would. So I'm just saying, we have a hard time. There's things we torture our bodies. We... <sighs> Can we get on our face before God and ask him what is wrong? What's happening with my body? Now listen, I'm not worshiping the body, but this is the temple of God. This is the real temple of God. Your body, he lives in, right? That's where God the Holy Spirit lives, right? Or aren't you saved? If God's going to do something in this world through the power of the Holy Spirit, he's going to do it through you. As you learn to pray to the Father through the name of Jesus Christ and learn to follow him. You know, it's amazing what God will do if we just pray. 
Lord, I want to do your will. I, this uh, couple of Thursdays ago, I was sitting at a quick trip waiting for another fellow. We were going to go have a service at a, at a, at a high rise over here. I have a number of services outside of our church building. And, and uh, I'm sitting in the car. I picked up my Bible, just started reading. Fellow working outside comes up to the car. He says, and he was working, sweeping out the, the, uh, the front there, trash and stuff, picking up. And he comes, I see you, you reading your Bible? I said, yeah, I'm reading my Bible. <laughs> he says, I've got a Bible. <laughs> anyway, and I said, I just turned to him. I says, well, do you realize that the Bible tells you that you can know the way to heaven? You know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? No. And I shared with him the scriptures in just five minutes, and I led him to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm having Bible study with him. You know? Well, that's being led of God, though. We need to wait on God in our lives. He's a personal God. And you go to God the Father, being filled with the Holy Spirit through the name of Jesus Christ to God the Father, and God the Father says, okay, Pastor Moody needs this right now. And he grants to the Son, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ grants to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit, and I receive from God, and then I do it. And then God blesses in your life. Old people get a hold of that. God's real, and he wants to answer prayer. This is not just some religious deal we're playing around with. This is a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know him? Only Jesus Christ is the way to the Father, the only way. Praise God. Amen. i got a couple minutes yet, and so I want to keep going here. You've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit daily in your life. You can't have unconfessed sin in your life. You've got unconfessed sin in your life, your thought life, your attitude, things you've done, sins you've committed. Are they under the shed blood of Jesus Christ? God wants to use you, but he can't when you keep walking in sin. He is your Redeemer. He's your Savior. He's the one that wants to give you his new life every day, all the time. So we have to walk in fellowship with him, and that's prayer again. Prayer. Only Jesus can give you real fellowship with God the Father. Only Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Do you look at your devotion time as a pleasing, wonderful time with the Lord? Are you taking time with God every day? Get into the Word of God. Let God's Word get into you. God wants to use you for His glory. God wants to use you. you got to listen to His Holy Spirit. you got to listen to His Word. God wants to use you. God. you got to get it from God. Amen? Praise God for the wonderful teachers you have here. They're helping you. They want to give you incentive. But only you can take hold of God's word yourself and apply it in your life. Only you. There's nobody else. You have to stand before God someday and give account of your life. What is he going to say? What are you going to say when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ? Are you going to have anything to offer him? Or will you have nothing but rags, as the song says. Oh, listen. God wants to have a relationship with us. And that then brings us to a right relationship this way. You see, we've got to be right with God this way to be right with God this way. And to be right with our fellow brother and sister. You got a problem with somebody? Do you have a forgiving heart? Did God forgive you? Can you forgive somebody else? Even though they don't come and ask you for forgiveness, can you love somebody that's unlovable? Only through Jesus. Only through Jesus. Only through Jesus. But you can. Because he loved us first. That brings us down to the last one. We aren't going to all the chapter and verses here. But I want you to turn quickly to this one. Second. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's go to second. Uh, first Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1. Paul says here as he writes to Timothy, without reading the whole section, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Are you faithful? 
Are you faithful? He has enabled you. He has enabled you through the power of the Holy Spirit. He's enabled you, but have you taken hold of his leadership? Are you obeying his leadership? Listen, the ministry, <laughs> I'm a pastor, but I'm only an under-shepherd. He is the shepherd. Do you understand? That's the way it has to be in our lives. Only Jesus Christ. 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 He's the one that makes the difference in your life. Do you really know him this morning? I'm concerned about this because I'm sure in a crowd like this, even here, there's some here that aren't saved this morning. You played church. God's trying to speak to your heart. You've been running from God. Oh, you're here. Maybe you're here for some wrong reasons. Maybe for the right reason, I hope. But you need Jesus in your life. Without Jesus, you can't do a thing, you see. He is the one that has to enable us for the ministry. You're looking to go into the ministry? God wants to use you. He's the one that has to enable you, turn you on. <laughs> Let him be in control of your life. Only Jesus can do that in your life. One more here and go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me until his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a testimony. What kind of testimony are you now? What kind of testimony will you have when you stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ? You know, that's why Jesus is in heaven today. He's preparing a place for you. That's up to you what you do with Jesus. The more you come before him in prayer and you ask of him, you're, the more you're in the word of God and you yield to him, the more God wants to bless in your life. The more he's going to strengthen you, the more he's going to build you. He wants you to be used for his glory, not your own, for his glory. But only Jesus can do it for you when you yield to him. I think of Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That word acknowledge, look it up. You know what it means? Receive God's knowledge. You know what it says? Receive God's truth. Receive it, receive it. Don't run from it. Run to Jesus Get all you can from him and use it all for his glory. And someday you'll stand before God and have to give an account of your life. What will it be at that day? The most important person in anyone's life must be Jesus. Is he first in your life? Do you know him as your personal savior? Are you looking forward to his coming? Are you serving him today? Are you where God wants you to be? I want you to consider in closing moments here. What will you do with Jesus today? Are you, first of all, are you truly saved? Do you really know Christ is your Savior? You got that settled? Get that settled. Get that settled right here this morning. Cry out to God. Let him come into your heart and save you. Do you really want to put Christ first in your life? Do you want the joy of him in, in your life? Will you let Jesus take control of your life? What will you do with Jesus? Only Jesus can do it. Give your heart to him. Let's pray. Amen.